Hi, I'm Michael from Pinnacle. I'm here with James from Face It. So we're going to ask some questions to see how he, what he say. Okay. Okay. So start, start simple. Yep. Valve have recently changed Counter Strike, added a bit of Vertigo to the map pool. Yep. How have you, how have you been feeling with those changes so far? I, I think I've actually had some some conversations with them. It's really interesting when you want to introduce. Uh, a different type of map, if you will, in that the only way to really get valuable testing is to just throw it in the map pool. Because if you look at when they um, they release canals, I, I was quite fond of canals. I was quite interested in in playing canals, and I played it a lot through lots of the changes. But I had a chat with them about you know it's kind of hard to get data without forcing it upon people, which is interesting. I think Vertigo was a, a, quite the challenge. Um, to put into the map pool, but again, w watching it played out, I think it's one of the one of the most interesting things. I think is the lack of of um, of horizontal range. If you because if you think about a traditional map, the T's have to try and take area away from the CTs, right? They need, to, they need to try and force them back and deny them information. If you look at like. Uh, Mirage in mid, they'll take over Connector and then they can split a site. Or Inferno, they'll push them off top mid so the, the CTs don't know where to put three of their, of their five players. You kind of lack, I feel like you lack that in, in Vertigo because, because of how vertical it is. So I, I, to me, I, I wonder if there'll be like a long-term issue with that as far as that map is concerned. So I don't know if it'll necessarily have the life um, that the other maps will do because I think it's okay for, for a map to be non-traditional, if you will, but I think that is a significant asterisk for me. So um, it was a rough spot. I think that there was a lot of, um, I think some of the players were like offended by some of the changes and, and things being put there in the first place. So the feedback wasn't so helpful. So like, this map sucks, as opposed to, I think this map has problems because of X and Y. It's like, you know, this is your, your you get paid, this is your, your livelihood so you can have a better output. Um, in that respect, but yeah, I think I think Vertigo is I think it's a tough one to um, to put into the map pool, but I think it creates an interesting situation for different teams because some teams have they have an auto veto already. So if you if there's one map already that you auto veto and Vertigo is a high variance map, then you may be forced to float that against other teams, which kind of puts you in a very weird situation where maybe you're forced to try and be an expert at that. But again, from what we've seen so far. I think it's hard to be consistent, although there have been dramatic changes recently, so there may be that changes, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's um, caused a lot of variance for teams who play it, and I think that it probably won't last as long as other maps which have been added, maybe when cash comes back, you know, that will replace it, I don't know. Oh, fair enough. So Valve have also made changes to the economy. Now, as long as you've have avid, face it, hub player, and like, have yeah, you seen also, also just an observer of Counter-Strike? How yeah. have you seen those changes portrayed? Okay, so the long-term changes we've had so far, which have changed si since, was a weird thing where the, your loss bonus, once it got to max, it would stack. Yeah. So if you, if you were at max loss bonus and you lost three more rounds in a row, you'd have max loss bonus plus three. So when you finally won a round, if it was your first round, you'd go down two, but you still have more than one max loss bonus, which is really weird, and kind of punished teams for winning rounds. Like if you won a round, but you won, but the round was a, a little struggle, you survive with two or three players repeatedly, especially on the CT side where it's more expensive to buy, then it, it pretty much became a comeback mechanic, like a Street Fighter 4 Ultra or something, where you're just gonna body your opponent. And um, that was a bit too much, a bit lopsided. Valve eventually, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not shy to wait out and get enough data before they will change something. So why, while something will feel clear to us that this is a problem, it may take them longer to, um, to determine that based on their own metrics. But I think now that they've fixed that, so to speak, um, I think it's in a pretty good spot. Because I think that if you look at, if you look at where we are now and where we were before, where um, you could get reset down to 1400s, that was extremely harsh. And it kind of reminds me of um, when you would accidentally team kill someone and you, you'd get fined like $3,300 or something, which might be one thing to, to deter someone in a casual game, but is, a, is unnecessary for a professional game. So obviously that was fixed a long time ago as well. So that kind of, looking back, it kind of makes me think of some parallels of that where you're just punished a little too harshly. So 
Um, I think it's I think it's better. I think it gives you more opportunities for more counter strikes. So I think we're in a good spot and a better spot now. So weapons in game. Have you have you seen them change? Okay, so we've we've had more bullets added to the silenced than four, which is good because it's spammable, but it's not abusable in in a way where it's overpowered. They haven't increased the the fire the fire rate of it, so so that's a plus. But I think people are still preferring the M4A4. But I think we'll see. I think we'll see some M4A1S. I think perhaps the distraction of the org has stopped people from really considering that at the moment, or maybe it's just a, the fire rate, the difference in fire rate is still too much for them. Um, I think the slight increase in price for the org was was good because it doesn't put it out, outside the realm of of um, being reasonable to buy, but at the same time there is a cost for the advanced, like you get better armor penetration and so on with the org, so, um, so it comes at a cost. So I think there's good balance there, we're seeing a lot of the org, but we're also seeing more M4A4 than we saw before, that price increase. So I think there's good balance, we're seeing a lot of different weapons in the game, and, um, and that's great. Obviously we have the, MP, the silenced MP5 as well. The MP7 is literally a better weapon in terms of accuracy and so on. The, there's a situational advantage in just spamming smokes um, because there's no traces. Um, so we see the MP5 here and there, but the MP7 um, is should be more common. So I think we're in a pretty good spot as far as weapons are concerned. Okay. So if uh, there's one thing you want Valve to introduce to Strike, what would you prefer it to be? Well, I would like to be able to draw on a map as I'm sure everybody knows. It's, it's, it's a really weird thing. Obviously, before they moved to Panorama on scale form, you could draw on a map, and it's, it's such an important tool just to be able to, like if, you're, if you take E-League, for example, when we're at E-League, we can talk to production, and they can, they can use our screen as a source. So if you're trying to explain something that a team is trying to achieve on the map, you know, it's, it's a way to make things more engaging. And, and if, you're, if you're at home or if you're making a video like a Sean and Gares, trying to explain a strat, if you can't do that with that outside tool, it just, it just, it just really sucks. Um, I, I do think that since they probably have to just re-add it from scratch at this point, there's a lot more that they could do. For example, if you've got five people in a team, you should be able to have one guy draw on a map and it display for everybody else. If he's trying to say, okay, we're going to do this or something, you know, then I think that would be a missed opportunity. So I hope that the reason it's not back yet is because they're implementing that kind of thing. I did send them an email with all this stuff. So um, with some input from Henry G as well, I have to give him credit for, that, for those ideas. But um, that would be one thing I really want to see because I think it's an important tool for communication. I think, I think it helps lower the barrier for entry for new viewers, especially when we have majors and things and you can, you can demonstrate that kind of thing. So um, I think it's a, it's a key thing to have that we're missing at the moment.